Good morning and thank you for joining us today for our Bluetooth Spotlight, May 2nd, 2023 briefing. I'm Amy Parker and I lead our media and analyst relations program at the Bluetooth SIG. Before I introduce our presenter, I wanna do a little bit of housekeeping. We will have the chat open during the live briefing and it will be monitored for questions regarding any technical issues you might be having during the briefing. This will also be an opportunity for you to submit any questions that you might have for us. These questions will not be answered in real time, but will be collected and responded to in our post-briefing email recap. In addition, at the ending of this briefing, we will be providing resources regarding the topics discussed this morning. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Chuck Saban, our Senior Director of Market Development. Without further ado, I'll hand things to you, Chuck. Yeah, hello, and uh, thank you very much, Amy, and, and thank you for being here. Uh, again, my name is Chuck Sabin. I'm the Senior Director for Market Development at the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. And I want to welcome you to this spotlight briefing for new and emerging use cases of Bluetooth technology. Uh, today, I wanted to provide you with the opportunity to understand better some of the key emerging use cases and upcoming enhancements to Bluetooth technology. Now, as far as an agenda is concerned, I wanted to do a very brief introduction of the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. I wanted to talk to our top level projections on device shipments and growth of Bluetooth technology. And then I wanna deep dive into key emerging use cases uh, for Bluetooth technology, and then sort of close it out with a little bit of a focus on a couple key enhancements to the technology that are coming here in the future. Now, along with the use cases and enhancements overview, I will pepper the update with data that is coming from an all new 2023 Bluetooth market update that was published earlier in March. Uh, the Bluetooth market update is an annual publication from the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. Uh, it's developed in collaboration with ABI Research, and it includes an updated five-year forecast for total shipments and radio mix, including low energy radio versus the classic radio. And it's broken up into major solution areas, including key use cases, and our insight on drivers of the forecast for today and drivers of the forecast for tomorrow in the technology. And I've provided a QR code and link here uh, that if you have not had a chance to review that publication, I encourage you to, to do so uh, you know, in the future. All right, so enough with the top level uh, um, related stuff, you know, let's start into the agenda. Uh, first, I'd like to just start off with a very quick view of who we are as the Bluetooth Special Interest Group or the SIG. Uh, Bluetooth is a globally recognized standards body and trade association. And we're the organization at the heart of Bluetooth technology, supporting industry leading companies around the globe in specification development, device qualification testing, and promoting Bluetooth technology. Uh, we're based out of Kirkland, Washington, just outside Seattle in the United States. And the Bluetooth SIG operates as a not-for-profit trade association with over 40,000 member companies working to advance Bluetooth technology in a variety of markets and solutions. And each year, Bluetooth member companies ship over 5 billion Bluetooth-enabled products worldwide. And that 5 billion continues to grow at a healthy pace. You know, the long-term and linear growth of a technology that's been around for 20 years, it's really almost unprecedented. Uh, member companies will be shipping 7.6 billion Bluetooth enabled products each year by 2027. And that number has the potential to explode as we'll talk about a little bit later on some of the enhancements that are coming to the technology and to the use cases. That's about a 9% CAGR that's been pretty consistent for you know, at least the last 10 to 15 years or so, showing that, that just continued growth of the, of the technology. Now, I do wanna put that a little bit into perspective with other technologies. Now, Bluetooth members ship more Bluetooth-enabled products and devices than any other major wireless category, including Wi-Fi and cellular. You know, put into perspective, Bluetooth is the number one utilized wireless communication technology for mobile and IoT devices in the world. Bluetooth is everywhere, as, mo as many people would, uh, would recognize. And because it is such a flexible technology, it may not always be the primary technology used in that device, 
but it is used as both primary and supportive communication technology for onboarding, commissioning, location, and other purposes in most wireless devices. Now you might ask, how does Bluetooth achieve these types of numbers and this type of status from within the ecosystem? Well, really it comes from member and company commitment to the technology and the innovation that they bring to it. Now this slide identifies some of the key emerging use cases for Bluetooth technology and a couple upcoming technology enhancements that are in the spe specification development pipeline. Now, while there are a number of use cases and enhancements I could cover, I do want to focus our time today on sort of recent developments in the market and some new, UK, new use case introductions that we've had. Specifically, I want to focus on the emerging use cases for Oracast broadcast audio, electronic shelf labels, and ambient IoT. And I also want to spend some time on the upcoming enhancements for higher data throughput and Bluetooth LE in higher bands. Now we can capture the advancements in digital key, smart home, and Bluetooth role in matter, and Bluetooth network uh, lighting control and other briefings or in follow-up as well. But I wanted to focus our time on, on these few areas uh, that I've highlighted uh, on this particular slide. So let's start with Oracast uh, broadcast audio. Now, Bluetooth has been leading innovation in wireless audio for over 20 years. And however, you know, it has been recognized that developers have, have ultimately stretched the classic Bluetooth audio, as we would call it, the classic Bluetooth audio to its limits. Now, LE Audio is the new flexible architecture from Bluetooth to support this next 20 years of audio innovation in the market. Now, just to be clear, you will see both architectures for quite some time in the market. This is not an instance where customers or users are going to need to throw away their current devices because they just suddenly won't work with new phones or tablets or PCs or TVs and so on. You know, classic audio and LE audio will coexist in the market for many years, working with both existing and new devices. Now, that said, very similar to the, to the classic radio versus the LE radio, much of the new wireless audio innovation will come with LE audio for now and, and as we start thinking about it from a, from a future perspective. So LE audio will, be, will bring, uh, you know, first a number of initial enhancements uh, to help relieve some of the challenges that we've seen in the market today. And there are really three initial benefits that you'll see and hear with LE Audio. Uh, the first is around better performing products, you know, higher quality, better performance, lower power into, the, into audio products using Bluetooth. The second is around greater availability of Bluetooth hearing aids. You know, with the new standardization that's coming to, the, to hearing aids for people with hearing loss, that brings along increased performance and overall global interoperability of hearing aid and hearing devices with mobile phones and other platform devices. The third area is broadcast audio and the introduction of Oracast broadcast audio for public spaces. Now, while we're excited for the innovation, the performance and the interoperability uh, that LE Audio will ultimately bring to the market, we are extremely excited for the emerging use cases of broadcast audio and the in introduction of Oracast broadcast audio. Oracast broadcast audio is a new capability for Bluetooth wireless technology that will deliver new audio experiences to help your world sound better. Now, no, this is not the traditional Bluetooth paired experiences. And, and we've got a lot of presentations and, and videos that can help explain exactly how uh, broadcast audio works. But broadcast audio allows transmitters, whether or not it's a phone, a tablet, PC, or a public transmitter in a public space, to ultimately broadcast audio to an unlimited number of in-range devices. No paired relationship required to listen to the audio coming from that transmitters. The transmitters ultimately have no idea who or how many people may or devices may be listening. Uh, and, and the smartphone in this case does not necessarily need to be involved for you to hear the Oracast broadcast. Now, a broadcast can be secured. It can be secured with a password for encryption. But 
when it comes to public spaces, we generally believe, especially in public spaces, that the audio broadcast should and will be open to all. Now, when you look at the Oracast story for the market, there are three key experiences that we are enabling for the future using Oracast broadcast audio. And again, we have a number of presentations and demonstration videos showing the Oracast experience and also highlighting some of the events that we've had in the past demonstrating the Oracast experience uh, to, to, um, uh, to people and to, uh, to interested parties. Now, the three experiences that we are enabling and that you'll see in those, in those, that, those videos and that, to those presentations are share your audio. Now, share your audio. This really means me sharing my audio with you or the people that are around me. In this case, it could be smartphones, tablets, and laptops that will allow you to share your audio experience with others to listen to music or to watch videos together. Now, this could also include other applications like tour systems and other group listening experiences where you are you know, ultimately trying to share your audio with people around you. The second experience is around unmuting your world. And this is providing the opportunity for an audio experience with the silent TVs that you see in bars, gyms, waiting rooms, and airports. Right? Silent TVs and monitors are everywhere. You know, everyone sees them. And simply stated, Oracast allows you to join the audio broadcast of that program or of a program or on a monitor rather than watching or even reading closed caption in silence. Uh, to create more of a complete watching experience. Now, this can also include multi-language support or listening to any audio source that provides a simulcast of an alternate language against that, uh, against that television or that monitor. The third area is around hear your best. Now, this is supporting audio accessibility and better hearing health, especially for those with hearing loss or when you just want to hear better what is going on around you, like PA announcements, lectures, and it could be just general conversations. Now, overcoming loud ambient noise in public spaces can be a challenge for everyone, and this is especially true for people with hearing loss. Now, Oracast enables direct audio listening to public address systems and other transmitters to help you hear your best using your listening or hearing devices. You know, this includes augmented audio experiences at theaters and assistive listening in public spaces and locations like places of worship or transit centers, airports, conference centers, or other public gathering spaces. Now, with all of that benefit, and as much as I would like to just snap my fingers and have global support for Oracast everywhere in all public locations for all devices, you know, this will not happen overnight. You know, then and time for this and time for the deployment is not, you know, measured in months. You know, it could take several years even to get the market fully integrated. Uh, but I am encouraged by what we are seeing, right? The estimated uptake and opportunity for LE Audio and the use cases for Oracast, uh, you know, is quite significant. And dual mode will be the bridge between classic audio and LE Audio the same way it was for the classic radio and the LE radio. And ABI estimates that there will be over 3 billion LE, enabled, uh, uh, LE audio enabled devices shipping each year within the next five years. Now what this represents roughly is 95% of new smartphones will be shipping LE audio each year in the next five years. And this is very consistent to what we saw when we first launched the LE radio, which is now at 100% of all smartphones, tablets, PCs uh, that, are, are, that have Bluetooth in, in them also have an LE radio in them. ABI also estimates, if you look at Oracast deployments, ABI also estimates that there are over 61 million establishments globally that could benefit and take advantage of Oracast broadcast audio today. And while it's still early to track trends, ABI estimates that roughly 2.5 million Oracast broadcast audio location deployments will be available to users in the next five to seven years. And we will continue to see that ramp up over time. 
Now, I do want to encourage you, we, have, we do have specific information on these types of deployments. So for more details on these and other estimates, I really encourage you to download and review the recent report that we pushed out uh, called LE Audio, The Future of Bluetooth Audio, and it's available on uh, Bluetooth.com. Now, the next emerging use case I'd like to cover with you is Bluetooth support for electronic shelf labels. Now, powered by most recent, uh, you know, most recent releases of the Bluetooth core specification and specific device profiles and services for ESL devices, ESL, ESL is a market that is actually measured in the billions of devices at the retail and production shelf edge. You know, ESLs help retailers better manage their business and their resources. And what's unique about Bluetooth ESL is it is the first standardized implementation of ESL. You know, current solutions that are out there are all generally proprietary. They're a proprietary mix of sub gig, 2.4 gigahertz, and, and infrared technologies. But it's large retailers that are driving for standardization and interoperability. And Bluetooth has now introduced a standard for Bluetooth electronic shelf labels. Now, this was actually created in collaboration with major ESL vendors and in coordination with major retail requirements. And Bluetooth ESL provides a highly secure, large scale, low power, interoperable solution to this massive market opportunity. And when I say sort of large scale and massive opportunity, you know, Bluetooth electronic shelf labels, you know, may disrupt the actual Bluetooth forecast over time. Now, the total addressable market, as I mentioned before, is measured in the billions, six billion to be exact, uh, if you were to put a number on it uh, today, right, for the total addressable market. It's anticipated that over 100 million Bluetooth enabled ESLs will be shipping each year by 2027, with well over 300 million installed base by 2027. Now, honestly, you know, I actually think these forecast numbers are modest uh, and, and could prove to be low. And, and then you might ask, well, why, why would I say that? Why would I sort of second guess some of the forecasts that we're seeing in this, in this area? And honestly, I think it's because momentum for Bluetooth ESL, I think, is going to build very quickly. Right? ESL is, in, is really a narrow ecosystem of very big suppliers. Now, with standardization, obviously, you can start, you know, more companies can start to enter the market. But the technology priorities are being driven by large retailers with hundreds of stores and millions of potential devices to be installed. And large retailers are looking to and driving the need for standardization. Now, last week, SES and Magatag, one of the key influencers in the development of Bluetooth ESL standardization, announced the next phase in their relationship with Walmart stores in the U.S. And this includes the deployment of Bluetooth electronic shelf labels in 500 of their stores over the next 12 to 18 months, representing roughly 60 million digital shelf labels in that deployment period. You know, and it's announcements like these that ultimately will drive the market towards standardization on Bluetooth ESL and really drive up the forecast opportunity for Bluetooth ESL in the future. Now, the third emerging use case that I'd like to cover is ambient IoT. Now, ambient IoT, you know, is a, as, a, as a phrase, you know, it can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But for Bluetooth, ambient IoT is really the culmination of a decade-long message for how Bluetooth LE supports pervasive, real-time IoT connectivity for almost everything, right? It is a total addressable market that is calculated in the trillions in, 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 in actuality, right? Um, and this is, this is really enabled by low-cost energy harvesting or energized tags. And these tags, they can track location, <clears throat> condition, and the state of almost any device, right? The, but it's targeted at improving supply chains, right? Early focus is on high velocity chains that have expiring goods and or significant returnable assets. 
Things like food, pharma, manufacturing are really prime markets for ambient IoT and pervasive connectivity between devices and, and uh, backends. And this is, again, this is a market that's, that's measured in the trillions, albeit it does need focus. But Bluetooth is well positioned to lead with standardized, low power technology able to handle the demands of the ambient IoT. And again, as I've already stated it, you know, this is a market that's measured in, in, in trillions of opportunity, right? <clears throat> Ambient IoT is set to totally disrupt market forecasts. When you look at the demand, you know, when you look at the demand side, you know, things like food waste, you know, that's a worldwide problem. 30% of food worldwide never gets eaten. In pharma and healthcare and manufacturing, you know, up to 20% of medical equipment and goods, you know, they're lost annually and up to 30% of time, individual time can be spent searching for equipment. And this is where the ambient IoT and the tags and the sensor systems that are associated with it can really benefit that market. And so forecasts for Bluetooth technology in this category are already pretty healthy. You know, with half a billion location services devices set to ship annually in the next five years, at almost 2.5 times growth over the next five years. You know, but when it comes to ambient IoT, we actually know of tag orders in the hundreds of millions. And, uh, you know, ambient IoT will ultimately require a new way of looking at forecasts and thinking about forecasts to address these low power, batteryless tags, uh, you know, for the future. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, speaking of new ways of thinking and, and keeping up with the demands of market, you know, there are a couple of future enhancements uh, to Bluetooth technology that I do want to make sure you, that you're aware of. And we can also talk about details uh, at later dates as well. The first technology enhancement project I wanted you to make, wanted to make you aware of is Bluetooth with higher data throughput, right? There are almost 2 billion devices in the data transfer solution area for Bluetooth primarily peripheral devices and other connected devices, set to ship annually by 2027. And there are another 2 billion audio streaming devices set to ship annually by 2027. And LE Audio stands to accelerate that number. Now these use cases and solutions continue to increase the market demand for data throughput, including things like faster firmware updates, you know, better responsiveness of the, the devices. In audio, it could be for more streams or lower latency requirements, as well as adding standard video support over Bluetooth. And Bluetooth needs to keep up with the demands of these solutions. So this project is actually set to more than double the Bluetooth LE data rate, taking it up to about four to six megabit, maybe up to eight megabit, depending on the, uh, the way that the specification uh, sorts out. Now, in no way is this trying to compete with, you know, Wi-Fi and the, the bandwidths associated with Wi-Fi, but, uh, but Bluetooth will be able to keep up with the demands and the enhancements of existing and new use cases. Now, the second technology enhancement uh, project I wanted to make sure you were aware of is an announced effort to take Bluetooth into higher frequency bands, primarily six gigahertz. You know, Bluetooth needs to keep up and keep innovating and expanding to meet future demands. And as I noted earlier, by 2027, you know, companies worldwide will be shipping 7.6 billion devices annually. And the installed base of Bluetooth enabled devices will be, you know, in the tens of billions. Right. And growth is coming from LE in both single mode as well as dual mode devices. And, and, and the low energy technology stands to grow even more with LE Audio impacting that 1.8 billion uh, annual Bluetooth audio streaming devices. Now, we're not seeing any problems with congestion. We're not seeing any issues associated with that. That's not the point uh, you know, around this particular project. But we do recognize the need in the ecosystem of, for Bluetooth devices recognizes the need to accommodate new use cases and to look at the coexistence and cooperative nature that Bluetooth has with other technologies like Wi-Fi. 
right? And we need to keep up with that demand and keep up with that direction for, uh, for Bluetooth technology. Now, it's, it's ultimately too early to talk about timing. You know, when you ask, so when is this going to happen? It's really too early to talk about timing. Uh, but we do see this as securing the next 20 years plus of performance enhancements for Bluetooth technology and the drive towards uh, more and more devices taking advantage of Bluetooth technology. So as you can see, there are a number of emerging use cases and upcoming technology enhancements that are happening with Bluetooth technology. And I've only touched on a few here today, and there's more that have been made public, uh, but we didn't cover, but we can also capture in, uh, at a later date or in, uh, in, other, uh, in other briefings. So that's actually it for me today. Uh, you know, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this live briefing. briefing. Uh, I'm going to actually kick it back over to Amy Parker uh, to help close things out and uh, conclude the the uh, the live briefing for today. So thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it, and uh, take it over, Amy. Thank you, Chuck. Lots of exciting work going on at the Bluetooth SIG. To learn more about the topics discussed today, please visit resources on Bluetooth.com for the Bluetooth market update. As mentioned at the top of the hour, we will provide these resources as well as a recording to this briefing in our post-briefing email. I also invite you to reach out to me to learn more about the Auracast Experience event series or to set up one-on-one -on -one deep dive briefings. On behalf of the Bluetooth SIG, thank you for joining us today.